Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. In this video, we're going to be taking a closer look at how The Last of Us runs on the PlayStation 3 emulator RPCS3. This emulator has seen a lot of performance and stability improvements over the last few months, as well as some user-created patches that have drastically improved how this game plays. Thanks to these updates, The Last of Us is running better than ever, and it can be played from start to finish. However, there are some major issues with the game in its current state that keep it from being considered playable. Over the next few minutes, we'll cover the settings that you need in order to run the game, as well as how it performs in general, and how a few patches can improve your experience quite a bit. We'll also take a look at some graphical glitches and crashes that you can expect to see throughout your playthrough, as well as how to get past a certain crash that may seem game-breaking at first glance. By the time we're through, I hope to leave you with a good idea of what to expect going into this game on recent builds of RPCS3, along with some insight into how to get the best performance possible and how to troubleshoot some common issues. Before we get too far though, be sure to subscribe to my channel if you're into this sort of thing so that you don't miss any future videos from me. The very first thing that you want to do before you run this game is configure RPCS3 appropriately. This game requires some pretty specific settings, and one of them is on the Debug tab which is not visible by default. To enable the Debug tab, head to your RPCS3 directory, then into this GUI Configs folder. Open up the current settings.ini file with a text editor like Notepad or Notepad++. Then search for Debug and set Show Debug tab to True. Go ahead and save this file, then open up RPCS3. Right-click on your game, and set up a custom configuration. Make sure your PPU and SPU decoders are set to LLVM, and SPU block size is set to safe, as anything larger than this is still very unstable with this game. On the GPU tab, just set the renderer to Vulkan, and adjust the scaling to a value that makes sense for your PC. I set this to 300% for this video so that the game would be upscaled to 4K but increasing it past 100% will impact performance a bit, especially on lower-end GPUs. It's also worth mentioning that this game is locked to 720p without a patch. We'll cover this patch in more detail in just a minute, but you should expect to use it for the entire game aside from the level cargo. This patch also allows the game to run without right color buffers enabled, but just keep in mind that you will still need to enable this setting to play without the patch and get through cargo. Turning right color buffers off will increase performance a bit while using the patch, but it will also cause some things such as bodies of water to not render at all, so you may need to decide between performance and aesthetics with this setting. I personally chose to leave it off. If you experience screen tearing, you can enable VSync to get rid of it, although you may get slightly better performance with it off. Everything else is set to the default values until we get to the Advanced tab, and here you'll want to enable read depth buffers as well as read color buffers. You'll also want to increase the driver wake-up delay a bit, but there's no need to go overboard. This setting won't fix all of the crashes, but I found that a value of 600 or so made the game reasonably stable. Finally, in the Debug tab, just enable Force CPU Blit Emulation. In addition to using these settings, I recommend using a DualShock controller to play this game. It's not necessarily required, but you do need motion controls for certain things like fixing your flashlight when it starts to go out. As mentioned before, you'll also want to use a couple of patches to play this game. I've combined them into a single patch file for you to download in the description. Just drop the patch.yml file into your RPCS3 directory and you're good to go. If you already have a patch file that doesn't contain these patches, you can just copy and paste whatever's missing into your existing patch.yml. When you need to disable the patch, you can either move the YML file out of your RPCS3 directory, or you can open it with a text editor like Notepad or Notepad++ and just type a pound sign or hashtag in front of the lines of code that apply to your game. If you need any more information about how to use patches, you'll find a link to the RPCS3 wiki as well as a video of my own in the description. The first patch in this file was created by RPCS3 contributor WhatCookie, and it disables MLAA or morphological anti-aliasing. This patch is a must-have as not only does it allow the game to be upscaled and run without right color buffers enabled, but it also eliminates some stuttering and provides a substantial boost to performance since MLAA takes quite a bit of processing power. That said, even with all of the recent updates to RPCS3 and these patches, you should not expect this game to perform very well in general, even on high-end CPUs. To give you some reference, I'm playing this game using an 8700K overclocked to 4.9 GHz, and another PC is doing the capturing, so there's no additional overhead from that affecting performance. As you can see, with the patch on, 
right color buffers off, and scaling set to 300%, the game sits around 15 to 20 frames per second for the most part, with some spikes just past 30, and some dips down to about 8 or 9 in a couple of very demanding spots, whereas without the patch and resolution scaling set to 100%, Things sat around 7 to 15 frames per second fairly consistently, although the stuttering made it appear much lower. So again, I do highly recommend using the patch, but just keep in mind that this is still a very demanding game and your mileage will vary based on your hardware. Along with impacting performance, you may have already noticed that What Cookies patch also fixes a few major graphical glitches, such as the flickering on the edge of your screen, as well as the pixelated mess that covers part of the screen in many areas of the game. It also gets rid of some of the overly intense white lighting effects and misaligned or doubled up images that previously made some sections of the game extremely difficult to play through. With these improvements in mind, it's worth mentioning that this patch does break the listening feature and it creates a few graphical glitches of its own, such as the overly intense bloom effect seen here in the woods. It also causes the cargo to output a black screen as you can see here, but the level can still be completed by simply disabling the patch. Additionally, some parts of the game such as the second part of Escape the City get a bit blurry with the patch enabled, although I think it's still a big improvement over the alternative. Aside from the additional bugs that are caused by the patches, you can expect to see a handful of other graphical issues throughout the game as well. One of the biggest issues in my opinion is the weird effect that covers your crosshair while aiming the bow as well as thrown weapons like bricks and molotovs. You can get through most of the game without this being an issue, but it is something that you're forced to deal with during the hunt. There's also an issue with rendering flames in some areas of the game, as well as a couple of textures on certain enemies, even with right color buffers enabled. In addition to this, there are close to 20,000 shaders in this game, so a lot of objects will pop in as shaders compile, particularly at the beginning of a new level or area. There is a shader interpreter coming to RPCS3 in the near future which is intended to prevent this pop-in, however at the moment it still needs some work before it becomes a practical solution for this game. You'll also find that certain lighting effects cause horizontal lines to appear on screen, and this is where the second patch comes in. Early in March, RPCS3 user ZeroX created a patch which disables some additional SPU lighting effects, and using his patch along with what cookies eliminates these artifacts completely. This patch does cause some issues with Z-calling, particularly in the prologue, and it can also cause an issue where a silhouette of a frame from a cutscene gets stuck on screen until you restart the emulator. This can happen without Zero-X's patch as well, but oftentimes it's only temporary, and it does seem to happen more frequently with this patch, so you may want to deactivate it if it becomes a bigger problem for you than the horizontal lines. So that covers patches, performance, and even a few graphical glitches, but once you're up and running, you're bound to notice that this game still crashes quite often, especially in the beginning. And in the end. And quite a bit in the middle too now that I think about it. Some recent updates to RPCS3, such as some optimizations to the LLVM recompiler and the addition of the driver wake-up delay setting, have made this game quite a bit more stable though. I played for about 20 to 60 minutes at a time with a couple of longer stretches, and I only experienced two or three crashes until I got almost halfway through the game. In previous builds, I could expect one or two crashes in the prologue alone, so this is quite an improvement. In fact, I was absolutely blown away by how stable this game had become. And then I hit a series of trap errors in the hotel elevator. These freezes may seem like a game-breaking issue at first, but thankfully, you can patch the game to skip right through these errors. There is an update in the works that will allow you to skip them automatically in the future, but for now, you must patch them manually. I had to deal with 18 of these errors in total, each one requiring me to restart the emulator, but I was able to make it to the basement in the end. But once there, I got a black screen as a side effect of my patches. The game saved my progress automatically once I got through the problematic scene though, so once I disabled my patch and restarted the emulator once again, I was good to go. I've included my patch in a separate document since it creates these issues, and it's 19 lines that would have to be activated and deactivated manually. This way you can just paste it into your existing patch.yml when you need it, and delete the lines when you're through the scene. And just in case you get different trap errors than I did, I've also included a template for what the patch should look like in the patch.yml. You can use this to create your own patch if mine doesn't work for you. Just modify the middle entry to match the address that shows in your error log when the game freezes due to a trap error. Like I mentioned before, you will have to restart the emulator each time you patch out an error, so this is likely to be a deal breaker for those who don't want to restart the emulator 20 times and edit a patch file to proceed through the game. 
Once I got through the traps in the hotel and out into the financial district, stability more or less went out the window altogether, and I started to experience generic crashes like clockwork every five minutes. This was annoying to say the least, and a bit discouraging after dealing with the trap errors, but once I got through the financial district, these crashes seemed to become much less frequent. I still found that the second half of the game was much less stable than the first half, but for the most part, I was still able to play for 15 to 60 minutes at a time depending on the chapter. Again, this is a great improvement over previous builds where just getting this far in the first place would have been an absolute chore. The only other nasty spot that I hit was in the underground tunnel near the end of the game. The same trap errors that I hit in the elevator showed up once again, but thankfully I only needed to add one extra line to the patch to get past them this time, and once I got past that section, I only had a couple more generic RSX desync crashes before finishing out the main game. So hopefully that gives you a pretty good idea of how this game is running on RPCS3 at the time of making this video, and how you can get the most out of your playthrough. Thanks to the patches, and some great improvements to the simulator over the last few months, this game is running better than ever, but there is still a ton of ground to cover before it can be considered playable. Performance and stability still leave quite a bit to be desired, and the emulator needs to be able to handle all of the fun tricks that this game throws at it, as opposed to relying on patches to disable them altogether. Due to the architecture of the PlayStation 3 and how complex this game is, we may never get to a point where The Last of Us is actually playable on a quad-core CPU, but with enough work, hopefully this one will be running on fairly accessible hardware at some point. On a subjective note, I really enjoyed this playthrough despite the issues, and I think that says a lot about how far this emulator has come. Like I mentioned before, I found that it used to feel like a chore making any sort of progress in this game due to the lower frame rate and higher crash rate. But this time around, I had a lot of fun with it, and I'm really looking forward to playing through it again after a few more optimizations. Once again, if you enjoyed this video, and you want to see more from me, be sure to hit that subscribe button, and I'll keep them coming. And if there are any other games that you'd like to see, let me know in the comments, or join my Discord channel and let me know there. And of course, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.